Well, if it's that troubling for your committee, I'm wondering why, up until now, a date has not been set for the education minister to provide answers. We've been at this since January, and the excuse was that parliament was on recess. Parliament has returned. And if this is a pressing issue for your committee, I wonder why nothing has been done about the situation just yet. Well, if I am I'm in the leadership of the subcommittee on education, that's why I'm a deputy ranking member. Mm -hmm. And I know fully well that the efforts have been made to engage the minister. Uh, originally, we were supposed to have met him, uh, I believe, the Thursday before we yeah. resumed. That's what uh, we're told. Sitting in Parliament. Um, yes, and we got information that uh, he had been engaged outside of the, the jurisdiction. And therefore, he would make time to meet with the committee on the 11th, which is today. So yesterday, members of the committee arrived at Teburi. Mm. Um, we went to some preliminary uh, issues and this morning we we gave audience to the student loan trust and so we're expecting the minister to have come this afternoon only to be told that again the minister is unable to join us so it is not for a lack of you know an effort but i can tell you that we have other ways of bringing these issues uh, to his attention and to the attention of Ghanaians and the rest of the nation and i have i have filed a few questions uh, to that effect Okay. So if it is the case that the minister is deliberately trying to avoid appearing before the committee, I believe he would have no choice than to appear before the plenary to respond to questions based on these issues that are filed. Largely in terms of oversight, really, there are those who get disappointed in committees like yours because you've been talking about funding gap. You've been monitoring all these, at least scrutinizing the budget of the education ministry. How is it that we have to be hearing about this? Edu Africa Education Watch will be highlighting these. In terms of oversight, then, you're feeling us as a committee. Well, I think to some extent I agree. And, you know, I agree not because... That, uh, because of the fact that members of, of the committee individually are not committed or that we don't know the issues or we don't have the capacity to, to canvas them and hold duty bearers accountable. I take the fault on our collective behalf largely because of the way parliament functions. I mean, there are limitations to what you can do even as the chair of a committee. Mm -hmm. And particularly so when our system is designed in a way that you know, really heightens the patronage politics system that we have. You have a situation where most of the committees are chaired by persons who are drawn from the government of the day. Mm -hmm. So in most cases or some cases, when these issues come up, very instantly, is there are political lenses that take center stage. By virtue of feeling that these issues may expose the government to political attacks or to ridicule the government or cause citizens to question what the government has been doing in the sector. There is always a reluctance okay. to move swiftly and to give us the opportunity to engage these ministers in a tenuous manner. So yes, we, we, we are failing to that extent, but there is a reason why we've not been able to do much as far as these issues are concerned.